I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today and today is Friday. Praise God. Hey, God is pouring out His love. Hallelujah. Praise God. And hey, we are coming to that place of fullness in our understanding of His love. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Whew. Are you ready to call forth your daily bread? Release your faith right now and say, Father, I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to first John. I told you I love John. I just love him. Praise God. I just love I was wondering, why do I love John so much? Then it just dropped in my heart. Because Jesus loved him too. Praise God. Yes. And not that Jesus didn't love every, all the other um, apostles. But you know, John, John just had a special place in him. So he always revealed his heart to John. And I believe John's relationship with Jesus should inspire you. Don't just be there. Get into his heart. Know what is on his mind. Praise God. Chapter 4, 1 John, chapter 4, and verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. Hallelujah. You know what God is releasing to you today? Do you know the thoughts God has released from heaven for you? Do you know the things that he has written concerning you? I can assure you of one thing. Sickness is not part of it. Your final outcome is not sickness. Your final outcome is not poverty. Your final outcome is not heartbreak. Your final outcome is not disappointment. These are not the things God has written concerning you. So it doesn't matter the challenge you are seeing from where you are today. You may be sick on that bed. You may be wondering, with, struggling with thoughts of death. I'm speaking to you right now. And believe me when I tell you this, this is not the end. No, this is not the end. Let me tell you one secret. Many years ago, this have helped me a lot. I was so sick and I had made up my mind because I've seen every scripture in the scripture, every scripture in the Bible, excuse me, that spoke on divine health and divine healing. I've studied all of them. I have confessed them. I have declared them. I have said, look, I'm going to be healed. This time, no drugs. I will be healed. But every day the situation became worse. So one day, I was lying down on my bed. I want to listen to me, listen good. And the thought crossed my mind because I was so weak. This was many, many years ago. I was so weak that 1999. This was 1999, yeah. So I was so weak. And I said to a thought crossed my mind. What you're doing? What if you die? What if you die from this sickness? Because I wasn't taking drugs, so I wasn't getting better. My health was deteriorating. And then I said to myself, I said, well, what I'm doing now, I don't know if I should tell you to try this or not. But I'm telling you my testimony, whatever you make out of it. But what I'm telling you is the truth. So I said to myself, I said, if I die, it's not a problem. Because I'm born again. I love God. I'll go to heaven. But this is what's going to happen when I meet Jesus. I'm, te I'm telling you what, what I told myself on a sick bed. I said, I'm going to meet Jesus. 
And when I meet Jesus, I'm going to ask him one simple question. Where did I go wrong? And then the thought came to my heart, like, look, haven't you heard that when people see heaven, they forget about the earth? I said, not me. I said, not me. I'm not doing this because I don't know how to take drugs. No. I'm doing this because I'm asking myself, if these things I see in here, they are not true, then let's drop these things. What, what are we doing with it? I was that practical with myself and God. So I said, I'm going to see Jesus in heaven and I'm going to ask him, Lord, what did I do wrong? And he will tell me, son, this is what you did. I said, oh, oh Lord, did I disobey you? Is there anything you told me to do and I did not do? So it's not me. If I didn't know something, it's because you didn't reveal it to me. So now that you have revealed it to me, can I go back? I'm telling you, this is what I said. I said, can I go back? I said, what if he says no? I said, no, Lord, it's cheating. This is not where I want to conquer. I need to conquer it there. So now I've gotten knowledge. I need to use it there. And that's when the thought crosses my mind. Haven't you heard that when people cross over, they don't want to? I said, not me. I'm not going to be satisfied in heaven. I'm telling you what I told myself. I'm not going to be satisfied in heaven if I don't come in right. And sickness is not a way to go to heaven. Listen to me. Death is not even the way to get to heaven. Oh, yes. I know this now. I didn't know this then. So I said, I'm going to resist everything until I'm sent back. I, I, I'm going to say, Lord, forget it. I need to go back. And so I made up my mind for that. I said, because I'm not afraid of not going to heaven. I will still go. So why hurry? Okay. I made up my mind. On the sick bed, I made up my mind. And see, as though, I wasn't speaking out. I'll tell you the thoughts that were going through my mind. Because at that stage, I feared that the next thing might just be dead. So I told myself, let me decide my destiny before it happens. After that period, now the same day, the same day, I heard the voice of God. You know, sometimes I just feel God is waiting for us to just take a decision or take a stand. I heard the voice of God. And he said, son, you've been confessing you are healed, but you're still behaving like a sick man. How? Then he said to me, what are you doing lying down? I'm lying down because I'm weak. Then it hits me. Everything I've been doing just played. You know how they fast forward and then life before you. Every faith thing I've been doing just played before me. I will wake up, I will pray and pray. Sometimes when I'm praying, there's so much energy. I'll get up and walk past that room, declare God's word, declare and confess and declare and confess. And when I'm done with all my speaking, you know, sweating and all, I'll lie down on the bed again and say, ah, thank you, Lord, because you have healed me. Oh, Lord, you, you know, I'll kneel down first on the bed. Then one leg goes on the bed, the other leg goes on the bed like, ah, ah, thank you, Lord. I'm healed in Jesus' name. I'm healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, oh, I'm healed in Jesus' name. Everything played before me. I said, oh, I received healing and did nothing with it. Oh, I see where my mistake have been. I know what to do now, brothers and sisters. I tell you the truth before God. That's how I got up and got out of that sickness and I became healed. No drug. 
the sickness left completely because I got up. I said, now I know what to do. I will declare God's word and I will stand by God's word. I took the first step, went to the bathroom, had my bath, got close to put on. I will never forget. I say this all the time. It looks like a joke, but it's the truth. I stood in front of the mirror for about 20 minutes trying to get a facial expression that I was going to walk out with. Praise God. That's when I realized divine health is real. Divine healing was real. No one came to pray for me. You see, so when I take the word for what it is, I know what I'm doing. If God says something, I take it. I say, Lord, same thing with finances. I mean, when I was done with my health, I'm like, oh, this thing works. Okay, let's put it to work in finances. And same results. I believe God. So when people tell you, eh, if you don't have a job, eh, nah, nah, they don't know what they are. They've not, they, they don't know the life of faith. It's not every preacher that understands the life of faith. What have they been taught by the Holy Ghost? Not what they read in the Bible. I didn't see any scripture in the Bible that told me that part. I saw what to confess. By his stripes I'm healed. He took all my sickness. I saw all that. I declared them, but they were not walking. Until the speaker, the one who spoke to Isaiah, the one who spoke to Jeremiah, the one who spoke to Peter, the one who spoke to John, the one who spoke, spoke to me also. Brothers and sisters, that was when faith came. And it came by hearing. I heard his voice and I acted on it. I got up and I was okay. So listen to me. That situation you are in right now, that's not God's final outcome. Why was I able to do what I did? Because I came to that point, just like John said, we have known and believed the love that God have, has for me. Now, I was convinced in my heart that heaven is my home. There was no doubt about that in my heart. And it's still in my heart. I, I wasn't asking myself, Hmm, what if I don't go to hell? That was that didn't even cross my mind. Because I knew Jesus. He knows me. I know my name is in his book. I was convinced of that, and I'm still convinced of that. You know your country home, don't you? You know. You know you don't have to beg. Your country is your country. Your home is your home. You start thinking in your heart, um, what if I go home and they don't allow me in? Why? Why? Even the prodigal son came to his senses and said, look, I'm going to go back home. And this is what I'm going to tell my father, because I've taken my inheritance. But I'm going to tell my father, look, I'm ready to work as a servant. But home, I'm going home. He came to his senses. And to a lot of us, that's what God is waiting for. When are you going to get up from that sick bed? Not because you're trying out something, no. Hey, I don't think God will look at me and say, it will be good for this, my child, to remain sick like this. No, no, no. Oh. I, this my this my son, this my daughter. I know what is good for her. Let poverty be given to her. No. No. He doesn't speak of his love. If you're still thinking that way, then you have not known what John knew. You haven't. If you are convinced that you are born again. If you are convinced that you are a child of God, then hey, act like a child of God. Get up from that sick bed. Stand up and begin to walk if you couldn't walk. Why? Because 
your father's thoughts is not sickness for you. Have you seen a child trying to walk? Even as parents, we are a bit helpless. You try to give the child a walker, hold this and walk. The child will hold it and begin to walk. But then for the child to walk on his or her own, it's in the child's mind. There is no, you can hold that child and say, walk, walk. The moment you leave the child, the child drops. But you as a parent, you will keep waiting for a day. You will look at that child and the child will get up by herself or himself and take those steps and take the other step. Now, all those other times you hold, say, walk, walk, and you leave the child, eh, he does and he falls. You will not shout. But the day you see that child, you're just watching and the child just stands up and stand and then, like, shh, 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 everybody, keep quiet. And then the child takes the first step, one, two, three. You scream. Why are you screaming? Didn't you know the child was going to walk one day? No, you're not screaming because the child walked. What you're screaming about is this child have come of age in this matter. This child have realized that I can get up, I can walk. Brothers and sisters, that's exactly what God is waiting for in your life. Oh God, heal me, heal me, heal me. Oh God, change my life, change my life, change my life. God is waiting. Now listen to me. Everything is there. Look at that child. You, you, you've already planned how you're going to take that child on a stroll. You've already you planned all these things. But you are waiting for that child to realize I can walk. Maybe you're on the sick bed right now. Maybe you're on the wheelchair right now. Whatever the doctors have told you is what life circumstances have thrown at you. Hey, he said to Isaiah, arise, shine, for your light has come. I love the way the Amplified Version puts it. He said, arise from the depression in which life situation have placed you. Arise from it. Get up from it. Get up from that sick bed. Stand up from that wheelchair. You can Same way, get out from that poverty situation. Get out from that complaining, complaining. Get out from that beggarly life. No, I will not beg again. Not me. I'm not taking my phone to call anybody and say, oh, please help the poor. Hey, I've not eaten. Hey, I'm, I'm my family. Hey, no! Lord, you are my shepherd. I'm not supposed to want. You love me enough. Let me tell you this truth. Whether you have a job or you don't have a job, that does not affect God's plan and activity for provision in your life. I'm talking with so much passion because this is truth. If I have not experienced this thing over and over and over again, I will be speaking apologetically. But I tell you the truth before heaven. Jesus said, if God can take care of the birds, you, you are more important than the bed. Don't tell me, oh, if, if, if I just had a better job. No, sir. It affects nothing. It's good to have a good job. It's good to be effective somewhere. Yes, but that does not affect your ability to receive from God. And it doesn't limit it either. So will you wake up from that sleeping stage of your life? Will you get up and say, Lord, you are my father. Then I begin to act like a son. You are my God. Then be my God. Open the channels. Open the gates for me. I walk right in as a child. From today, I begin to behave as a child of God. I walk tall. I walk tall. I beg nobody. I'm the lender. I'm the giver. I'm a helper. I'm not one seeking for help. Rise up. Doesn't matter the, what's happening around you. Rise up. Rise up. And God, see, let me tell you something. It was the day I got up, I made up my mind. The Lord gave me that wisdom. He says, get up. Stop acting sick. I'm declaring healed. If I just say, oh God, heal me. Oh, 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 it's not working. Oh God. Maybe, maybe 
But brothers and sisters, his life has been given to us. We are sons of God. Behold, what manner of love the Father has declared, he has lavished upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Do you know what that means? He says, beloved, now are we the sons of God. Get up. Act like a child of God. Don't act like a normal human being. Act like a child of God. And you will see the hand of God upon your life walking like never before. Praise God. Woo, my time is up. Holy Carlos, I pray the Lord help you. I pray he lay his hands upon you. I pray the Lord give you perfect understanding of this truth. I pray the love of God is being made manifest in your life so much that everyone who have known you will say this about you. God loves you. This shall be your testimony in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Have the best weekend ever. Bye.